Hey, Uncle Mark, uh, you know how sometimes... I object. Well, <laughs> overruled. Oh, damn it. You know how sometimes we uh, talk about the law and yes. how, how religion... Inter- you know, theoretically, in these United States, there's this separation between church and... I, I'm doing air quotes. Between church and state. Lies. Uh, apparently. Lies. These are damned lies. Yeah, it's uh, a very it's a very law oriented show today. Yeah, we, so we, that's right, that's and, right. And I think we're going to explore a, another total absurdity with the law today. And uh, we're joined by Uncle Doug, hello, who is sitting in what would normally be the venerable P. Andrew Torres seat of law splaining. Right. To, except, that, uh, except that he won't take our calls anymore, and he's qualified he, to talk about. Well, because things. you only call him at three fifteen in the morning after like your ninth DUI. So well, that's when I have the problems. <laughs> that's I when I need you, dummy. I, I can't help that. Pick up. <laughs> uh, so, Doug, you're going to talk about a, a an exciting new uh, 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 landscape of American legal wonderfulness. I think. Yes, as and and you know, this is not a a. a legal podcast, nor is it a um, current affairs podcast, nor is it a political podcast. So we're going to talk about all those things. We're going to talk about all those things because one particular little guy, well, little it's not, guy. It's, it's not not those things. R- uh, correct. Yes. But when, when those things veer into our lane, yes. then we certainly talk about them. And for some reason, Jefferson Beauregard Sessions III cannot help but veering into this lane. Derek no, Keebler for Fuhrer. He, he drives his little elephant tank all <laughs> over the road. <laughs> So uh, for, for a, a more in-depth look into Jefferson Beauregard Sessions III, mm. I would refer listeners back to uh, episode 41, where we, we talked a lot about him and his history and where he comes from, and we don't need to review that ground we, right now. We poked the tree that he lives in. We did. We you shook, know where he comes him from loose. is that the, the lust for that beautiful gold ring drove him so insane <laughs> that now he lives in a cave and eats, what does he do? He eats fish. That's who he is. Yeah. Would, would that it would make him invisible. Anyway, yeah, go on. Well, so as most of you uh, and our listeners are aware, on uh, Monday, July 30th, 2018, the Attorney General of the United States announced the creation of a Religious Liberty Task Force. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, exactly. Bird cops. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, we, there's not a lot known about this task force or what it will be doing exactly, except that, as uh, Jeff Sessions said, the purpose of this task force is in part to enforce a 2017 Department of Justice memo that ordered the federal uh, the federal agencies to take the broadest possible interpretation of religious liberty when enforcing the law. Uh, point of order. Hmm. I think, A, I think we do know what this task force yeah, exactly. is for. <laughs> and B, interpreting the law, uh, the broadest possible thing in, uh, in interpreting it for Christians. Uh, yeah, we will. We will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it is. It is to a, a group of stormtroopers to break down the door of somebody who was mean to a white Christian guy on Twitter. Uh, yeah, this the, no. Uh, you, so I'm fucked. <laughs> all, all of our Sikh and Muslim uh, <laughs> listeners out there, this is not good news for you. I'm afraid. Um, so in in this 2017 memo that Jefferson Sessions wrote, uh, it it states. Religious liberty is not merely a right to personal religious belief or even to worship in a sacred place. Oh, good. It also encompasses religious observance and practice. Except in the narrowest circumstances, no one should be forced to choose between living out his or her faith, his, and (laughs) and complying with the law. Therefore, to the greatest extent practicable and permitted by law, religious observance and practice should be reasonably accommodated in all government activity, including employment, contracting, and programming. So long as it's Christian. So <laughs> so uh, the following 20 principles should guide administrative agencies and executive departments. Oh my God, there's 20? There's 20 principles. We will not read them all here, but the, Thank you, God. you can go find this memo online, and it's long, and it's bureaucratic, which is obviously on purpose. Um, but there are 20 principles that government agencies, most especially the DOJ, which is a big one, Department um, of Justice for our foreign listeners. Right. Department of Justice uh, uh, need to you to um, factor into their decision-making processes. So number three on that list of 20 is the freedom of religion extends to persons and organizations. Uh, and num- organizations. And right. organizations. Right. Uh, number four says Americans do not give up their freedom of religion by, by participating in the marketplace, partaking of the public square, or interacting with government. 
And we don't have to bake cakes if we don't want right. to. <laughs> right. The baking of cakes factors into that, that, a lot of modern jurisprudence. That number right there, that yeah. one, that should guarantee me the right as a gay person to go be able to buy a cake. But that's not what it's for. That's not. That's it's for the exact opposite. Right. Um, and and you know again, just a little background on this. The, the, in this, the laws that came out of the civil rights movement basically said if you're participating in the public square, which means if you're using the public roads, you're paying in and paying in and receiving services from the government, uh, you cannot discriminate against people for you know A, B, and C various reasons. And and recently, in a lot of cases, sexual orient- orientation has been added to that list. Right. If you hang out a shingle, yeah, right. and you're a dentist, yes, you, and and you cannot then hang below that. No Koreans. Correct. Right. right. Yeah. Right. And and that's you know that's what. Is missing from a lot of this. There's, I think, the scathing boys have the, have the game make it black, which is like it, right. Like if you're wondering if what you're doing is okay, switch it to black and see. Like if you if you're wondering if it's okay to 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 discriminate in the way you're doing it, just try it with a black person. Just right. just see if in your mind that's okay. Yeah, just pull out gay, put black. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Or Jew. I'm not going to make this wedding cake because I don't like the fact that you are black. Yeah. Doesn't work. Well, who knows these days? Well, these Seems days, like yeah. Uh, well, I, th- I think Jeff Sessions will get us there. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I think if if there's one hero that can champion that cause, <laughs> why can't they make their own cakes? <laughs> um, I don't even know if they like our white people cakes. <laughs> uh, number nine on that list of twenty is government. Government may not interfere with the autonomy of a religious organization. Mm. Um, and and I, and I have to. I, I have to apologize. Boy, because, that's a slippery fucking slope. Well, man. this is a rabbit hole full of rabbit holes. Right. Yes. So bear with me. Uh, we'll bring it kind of all together at the end, but it, I think all of these points are necessary to the story. Yeah. Um, uh, of the 20 principles laid out in this memo, wh- whose, who's, you know, implementation is the sole purpose of this religious task force, or not sole purpose, but main purpose, um, tw- uh, six of them are based on the 1993 Religious Freedom and Restoration Act, or RIFRA. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, number 12, for example, and we'll talk about RIFRA here in just a second, but number 12 on that list says, um, RIFRA does not permit the federal government to second-guess the reasonableness of a religious belief. <laughs> number 15, RIFRA applies even where a religious adherent seeks an exemption from a legal obligation requiring the adherent to confer benefits on third parties. There's your wedding cakes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or, or that's also like to protect nuns from having to provide birth control to their employees, which they weren't being asked to do anyway. Right, and we'll, we're being asked to provide information on where that could be the, the exactly. policy, they, or they had to, st- or the, the oppression of having to sign that waiver that said we right. don't the way right. have to right. do that. It's a lot of form. It's yeah. the worst. Um, so RIFRA was introduced in 1993 by Chuck Schumer in the House and Ted Kennedy in the Senate, oh, fuck. Um, and then. Uh, Passed nearly unanimously and then signed into law by Bill Clinton. So thank you, Godless Democratic Party. <laughs> yeah. Um, RIFRA uh, reinstated what is called the Sherbert test, which derives from a couple court cases. Uh, again, we're going down a bunch of holes, but we'll, okay, we'll get out. The only way out is through right now. <laughs> Sherbert v. Werner in 1963 and Wisconsin v. Yoder in 1972. The Sherbert test mandates that strict scrutiny, quote unquote, be used when determining whether the free exercise clause of the First Amendment to the United States Constitution is in effect. So, I didn't understand any of that, but <laughs> I suddenly want Sherbert. So, <laughs> um, the Sher- so uh, basically, RIFRA states that uh, a religiously neutral law can burden a religion just as much uh, as a law that was intended to burden that religion. Therefore, the Act states uh-huh. that the government shall not substantially burden a person's exercise of religion, even if the burden results from a rule of general applicability. Wow. Okay. So, so in trying not to burden the religion or any religion, you may burden some religion by accident. Right. Therefore, we can't have laws. Well, right. Yeah, basically. Yeah, exactly. So, I, you know, <laughs> if, if my religion mandates that I can't drive 55 right. and the speed limit is 55, <laughs> even though the law is meant for everyone, it is particularly onerous to me based on my sincerely held, that's in quotes because that yeah. matters, Religious belief, and therefore I am free to drive at any speed I want. Which, or, which your religion is called semi hagarism <laughs> Exactly. Or yeah. you know, if my religion says that I can't that I can't seek medical attention for my child, even though they would be healed and quickly right. uh, taken care of, I I can I can let my child die, even though child abuse child abuse laws apply to everyone. Right. Your sincerely held religious belief 
means that you don't have to treat your child. Right. Which doesn't, which, by the way, that doesn't work. A lot of people have gone to jail for this. But, but, but not all of them. Less and less, exactly. Yeah. Um, okay, so I, I, a lot of listeners will know this, but the motivation for RIFRA was actually a response to two other court cases, Ling versus Northwest Indian Cemetery Protective Association in 1988. That's a classic. And Employment Division v. Smith in 1990 that dealt with the government building roads on sacred Native American lands and the allowance of peyote to be used in Native American religious rituals. Right. Mm-hmm. In both cases, the government fe- fe- um, ruled against the Native American tribes, said a peyote was, was a class one drug. Because you- if you're building roads on peyote, it's a fucking disaster. <laughs> um, Been there. And a couple religious tribes, nations, right, reservations, right. tried to prevent the government from building roads for you know, logging and oil purposes. And the government said, well... It's a it's an Indian treaty, see. And so yeah. basically, what they're saying is, what what we need to learn from all of this is again that these laws, that RIFRA, that all anything that's practiced in the name of religious freedom in this country, what it means is Christian freedom. Yeah. Well, right. so in in 1993, um, the the young Clinton administration tried to use this as a tri- like a triangulation issue to take. Uh, it away from Republicans as a campaign issue. All right. So they're saying, oh, you know, we'll, we'll pass this law that kind of helps Native American tribes. We'll look like we're protecting religion. But meanwhile, what they actually did was handed a baseball bat with nails in the top of it to the Christian right. To, right. to Ant- Antonin Scalia. Exactly. And the, un- uh, the unintended consequences um, of this, you know, the, the, this, the RIFRA has been used prominently in the Hobby Lobby case we were just talking about, right. about employer-provided contraception, the Masterpiece Cake Shop case in 2018, bakers don't have to bake cakes for gay people. Even Which is a, not what that was, said, but yeah, I mean, it got That's pretty, how it's been interpreted. Right, and it's, and it's emboldened a lot per, of bakers. Exactly. And uh, what the now, fuck is wrong with bakers? Like, I don't know. The fuck is the? Is it Why are so many flour? religious bigots baking cakes? Do right. they have sugar lung and it drives them crazy? <laughs> like, <laughs> just, we need uh, some serious fucking autopsies to figure out what in the world is drives florists and bakers to be so fucking homophobic. I don't right? know. Um, well, uh, we all know that <laughs> baking is just a a, a a function of religion. So, yeah, I suppose it is. Well, and it doesn't. Baking does not come across as the most. Uh, I, I'm going to demonstrate my bigotry here. Manly. Um, uh, it seems more of kind of, you know. A lady thing? Uh, it's not auto mechanic. It's not, you know, fireman. It just seems more like, why are all these kind of crazy religious bigots doing this thing that most of them would probably make fun of? Right? I don't yeah. understand how they found uh, and fell into this it's, thing. It's typically, I, yes. It's typically not a lumberjack competition. Right. Anyway. Anyway, what do I know? Um, another 2000 law called the Religious Land Use and Institutionalized Person Act, Persons Act, or RLUPA, mm, uh, introduced classic. by one Orrin Hatch, okay. extends religious priv- uh, privileges to property and has become another uh, baseball bat in the hands of the religious right, basically trying to erode the protections against religious encroachment into government. Both laws were also recently used as ammunition in the religious, r- religious rights Trinity Lutheran v. Comer which drove a knife into the heart of the prohibition against public funding going to religious institutions. Um, after this case failed utterly in the lower courts, it was overturned, and 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 they, the um, this uh, Trinity Lutheran got a favorable favorable outcome from the Supreme Court. The tie being broken by the newly appointed Neil Gorsuch. Yep. Mm. So these two laws, Rifra and Riliupa, um, are were both mentioned by Jefferson Sessions in this memo. And in the speech he gave, introducing this Liberty Task Force, so these are these are bricks in an edifice that has been being built for fifty years. Yeah, right. That's meant to tear down the civil rights movement, the New Deal, the but Great you know Society. What? Don't vote because what does it fucking matter? <laughs> <laughs> Don't. They're both sides are the same. Exactly. Um, oh, also, <laughs> Riffer and Rilupa um, are main components of this memo. This memo also. Uh, it has a stated goal, which is to prohibit the IRS from threatening tax exempt status for any religious organization that objective that actively lobbied on behalf of a political candidate, which Please. is against the law. It is against Currently, the Johnson Amendment. You're right. Yes. Now, so the, the, we have we have <laughs> a law that says that they can't do it, and we have a an legal, attorney general. We yeah. we have a Department of Justice that will not be allowed to prosecute them. So another rabbit hole: the Johnson Amendment, named after then Senator LBJ is a provision of the U.S. tax code passed in 1954 
that prohibits all 501c3 nonprofit organizations, such as religions, from endorsing political candidates. And right. This, and this, it also binds, like, let's not forget that it also binds, like, a museum can't do, you know, can't, can't. Right, support a specific candidate right. and stuff. The yeah. whole point is, these are you know, when you're a five hundred one c three, when you're a nonprofit organization, you're you're not paying taxes and you're kind of owned by the people. Right, and you and, you're, and everybody you else stay. is paying taxes, so they could, so they can share the common space and have a voice. Right, right, exactly. You're, you're free from that, but in in exchange, shut the fuck up. You don't get you're you're not paying for the roads, you're not paying for the fire department. Nope. So therefore, you can't advocate for candidates. Also. Another thing that this re- the, the, the repeal of or the complete just negation of the Johnson Amendment would do is make uh, political donations tax deductible. Because if, if you can launder your money through a church who is endorsing a candidate, right. you can deduct that, yeah. which recurrently you can't do. So there's a lot here. So oh, fuck. Um, let's go back to the religious, um, uh, what do I call it? The religious left TF, R- RLTF task force. Yeah. Religious Liberty Task Force. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. I got I got a lot of words. Which here. is a distinct entity from the Space Force, I believe. But maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah. They're related. Maybe not. They'll share ships. Yeah. Um You know, if there's one thing we know, it's that astronauts have rights. And <laughs> they and religious rights are, are chief among them. Actually when you're weightless you have no rights or lefts or ups and downs. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. this is this whole show is just, just gone completely <laughs> sideways. <laughs> Um, okay. In his speech announcing the creation of the Religious Liberty Task Force, Jefferson Sessions said the following. Uh, I, I would do it in my best boss hog impersonation, but I don't do a good one. So, uh, let us be frank. A dangerous movement, undetected by many, is now challenging and eroding our great tr- tradition of religious freedom. There can be no doubt. This is no little matter. It must be confronted and defeated. Yeah, it's you, you <laughs> I think, dickhead. I think he's talking about us. <laughs> I think he's talking about that. Too. He's ta- he's talking about us. He's but, talking about us. But like the thing that he's describing is his damn self. Absolutely. Yep. This election and much that has flowed from it gives us a rare opportunity to arrest these trends. Such a reversal will not just be done with electoral victories, but by intellectual victories. Uh, oh, I don't think sure. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't think you're not yeah, you guys get, got that one. I you're think not get I, any of those. I think the word arrest does a lot of heavy lifting in that paragraph. Yeah. Uh, we have gotten to the point where eight courts have held that morality cannot be a basis for law, where ministers are feel fearful to affirm, as they understand it, holy writ from the pulpit. Fuck off. Fuck you. Fuck off. And and where one group can actively target religious groups by labor, lab, labeling them a hate group on the basis of their sincerely held religious beliefs no hold on there i can you can call anything you want a hate group well you, you, he can't tell you you can't do that right exactly he, well, he's just trying to undercut the southern poverty law center that's exactly right, right. And he's trying to make that he's trying to discredit them that's exactly uh, that's exactly because, right because they're mean and they they call the kkk a hate group even well though- the, the, and they've they they've not only listed the kkk kkk a hate group um, but the Christian Family Research Council, the American Family Association, yeah, yeah. because the Southern the SPCL or SP Southern Poverty Law Center SPLC, yeah, uh, does they they're not into like hating on queers. They're yeah. th- they're just kind of they're kind of not about that, right? They're uh, they're nice to the Jews and the blacks and the queers and the. Do you know who else they've listed as a hate group? Us, the fundamentalist Church of Ch- fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. <laughs> well, no shit, yeah. <laughs> Duh. I'm um, surprised they haven't gotten to the actual Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. Um, one other thing that uh, um, Jefferson Sessions said as he as he end, he rolled up his uh, um, comments was, "Yeehaw, <laughs> <laughs> get him!" Yeah, it, it, I am going to get those Duke boys if it's the last thing I do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> We're old. <laughs> Uh, the task force will help the department fully implement our religious liberty guidance by ensuring that all Justice Department components are upholding that guidance in the cases they bring and defend, the arguments they make in court, the policies and regulations they adopt, and how we conduct our operations. That includes making sure that our employees know their duties to accommodate people of faith. Yeah. Again, though, when somebody says, my faith is it, it, Jediism, absolutely. or yeah. my faith is... <clears throat> Satanism, or my faith is Mormonism, or right. my faith is Mormon. They are not talking about right. this that is person. White evangelical Protestants. Yep, that's exactly right. This yep. task, no one else. This task force, not Catholics. Nope. This task force has two jobs: privileging Christianity, yes, and uh, and paving the way for honest, good folk to uh, 
to target and to discriminate against gays and transsexuals and whatever they want uh, at their leisure. Yeah, I this is the make, make Leviticus Great Again uh, <laughs> act. Um, it, it, it's, it's completely insane. And this is why, like, stupid fucking Orrin Hatch and, and any of these people from religious minorities yeah. that are excited about opening this Pandora's box, they're fucked too. Yeah. Yeah, they're yeah, fucked too. Because, you know, in, in Clinton's case with Rifra, I think they were actually trying to help a religion that they thought was getting beat up a little bit. Right. I mean, the, the slippery slope is the problem, that it will end up in the hands of people who are religious bigots if, if and only want to help themselves. If there is ever a Lakota Sioux theocracy in this country, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. We'll but sort yes. that out. <laughs> we'll, we'll deal with that at that time. It, uh, I'm not super scared about it right now. We'll cross that rope bridge when we have to. Yeah. It's so funny because, this, you know, what, what we have is a system where we've got you know, nine Supreme Court justices, all of whom are either Catholic or or Jewish. Yes. Yeah. And uh, all of them are, yeah. And then uh and then they're ruling on, you know, what the Satanists can and can't do. I yeah. mean, it's just a weird it's a this is a weird country, you guys. It's a super weird country and it is it 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 is a weird time that I find I have very little frame of reference for on most days. Yeah. Yeah. You know, as, as everything like that, like what you're talking about, Doug just gets eroded and eroded and every norm is just, uh, destroyed. I don't know. It's, uh, well, I, I you know, this, I, I'm sorry to be such a bummer. Uh, this is legitimately scary. I mean, this is honestly, uh, this is the culmination of decades and decades of court cases and funding and candidates and campaigns, and and it's coming to fruition. They have they have. I'm, I'm sorry to be a bummer. They've never had more power than they have now. Right. And, and this is not a conspiracy. This is the stuff they say to cameras. Yeah. This this, this is Christian. Well, right. no, it is a conspiracy. It's not a conspiracy theory. Right. It is an open and very uh, uh, yeah, outspoken precisely. conspiracy. Yep. To to uh, eliminate the the minority protections that have been so. Hard fought right, yeah. over time in this country for both for, yeah. for yeah. people of color, for women, for LGBT people, for handicapped people, yeah, for um, atheists, for atheists, for and, for non-believers, for the religious minorities of this country, yeah, because these these things that people have fought and bled for and died for benefit us all, yeah, yeah, um, and and they including are being these, torn including down. The, in, these overprivileged white Protestant evangelicals. They're just too myopic to see it. They yeah. just they think that. The three of us being able to sit in this room and have this conversation is oppressing them. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, it's 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 like they said, you know, uh, about people, white people complaining about black folks who are protesting, or or straight people complaining about uh, gay people who Pride are protesting. Parades. Yeah. Pride parades. Yeah. The loss of privilege feels like oppression. If you're an idiot. Yeah. If you're a dipshit. If yeah. you're, and especially if you're, like. One of those people who refuses to hear anybody else. Yeah, you feel oppressed when you know. Oh no, the eighty percent, the seventy-five percent of us who live in this country who are Christians, somebody's saying not, not nice things about us. Right, oppression. Right, yeah. and again, it's not to to go back to the homophobic bakers. Freedom is not a cake. Right, there's when someone gets some, you don't get less. Right. right. There's there's enough. There's there's enough, enough for everybody. everybody. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, with rights, you, someone else having equal of it. It's not a zero sum game. It's does, not taking yeah. your case. Doesn't take away your rights. Well, and you know, the, this we're coming up on the most important midterm elections of our lives. Mm. Um these this religious task force is in its infancy. They don't yet have uniforms and Their badges. rockets are not yet perfected. Right. Yes. They don't yet have uniforms and badges, but if we keep going in this direction, they fucking will. So, yeah. So fucking vote. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and unfortunately, you know, we're not a political podcast. We're not, that's not yeah. what we're about. Uh, but you have to vote against uh, these Republicans. Yeah. yeah. You do. It's just, you it's just plain and to. simple. There is, there's evil afoot in the land, and even if you hate the Democrats. It's a binary choice. The lesser of two yeah. evils is the lesser of two evils. Right, yeah. And it's it's cold comfort that right now what is protecting us more than anything else is the grotesque incompetence of these evil people. Right. Yeah. So let's not count on that for too much longer. And if Amen. you if you have a competent uh, Democrat to vote for, then all the better for you. Yeah. Right. Indeed. All right, guys. Well, that was super fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's move on. Sorry, everybody. Let's move on. Let's move on. 